Good morning and welcome to our 10 minutes at 10. We're a little late this morning. We had some phone calls that we had to go and deal with and all that stuff. So welcome and today we're going to talk about your value ladder. So this week we've talked about, let's have a mic over here, that's a good idea. <laughs> Just so I didn't know it was uh, Oops, mic there. Tech so issues. today we're going to talk about, <laughs> that's organisation <laughs> issues, that was, it wasn't planned. So today we're going to talk about um, your value ladder. So you've looked at your customer, you know who your customer is, you know what your product is, but do you? Do you really? Um, we've talked about knowing your marketplace and we've talked about understanding how to get that offer out there. So knowing what you're going to offer. And we kind of touched on um, the, the value ladder. So I'm going to share my screen with you and I'm hoping it's going to show the picture that I brought up earlier. There we go. So this is, I'm going to make that a bit smaller so it fits in screen. That's not going to want to go a bit smaller because it's a photo. <laughs> so let's move it around a little this is bit. Tech issues. So this, this is tech issues. There we go. So this is a value ladder. And I'm going to see if I can squish us up a little bit and move us over. There we go. So this is a value ladder. So the concept of a value ladder is that you've got um, as, as something increases in the value of what you're delivering to your customer, it also increases in price. Another way of looking at your value ladder is that you are the most important, most profitable, most expensive commodity at the top. So people start further away from you in the value ladder and then get closer to you as they pay more money in the value ladder. So how does that work? in practice so one of the the challenges that we see um, with our customers is um, this sort of boom and 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 mm. bust effect with marketing so i was talking to uh, one of our customers yesterday who um, they are performers at events so they do this sort of they have this massive um, effort on marketing and direct marketing and email marketing and constant calling and um, advertising to try and get their summer bookings up and they, they focus on this quite heavily through the, the winter when they're quite quiet and then they have a hugely busy summer season where they're constantly out on the road and they're at event after event after event after event and then they get to the end of the summer and everything drops off so part of that is cyclical but as we all know there are winter events and there are you know 24 7 events so the challenge that she has is this boom or bust effect with her marketing which ends up with a boom or bust effect in her business so she markets really heavy she's really busy when she's really busy she doesn't have time to market so she gets to the end of the activity generated by the first marketing round and then everything stops and then they need to start again. So it's very similar if you're in um, you know, a, an electrician's uh, business or if you're in some kind of health business, say you're helping somebody with back pain or a stomach pain or, or some kind of pain. If you get to a point, say like an osteopath or an acupuncturist, you get to a point where that um, session or that series of sessions is completed and the pain is resolved, then there is no reason for that person to keep coming back. You kind of become your own um, redundancy uh, in effect because you, you complete your job and everything's finished. It's the same if you're in graphic design or a marketing campaign. So your challenge is to try and generate an income that is recurring. And how do you do that? So one way of doing that is to look at what we call a value ladder. Um, and the value ladder talks about adding more value as people pay more money. But the key to the value ladder is, is that you keep them coming back and buying more. So Harry's going to talk about this one. So um, the value ladder that I've drawn here, you can you know, tell I went to great lengths and expense to draw this up this morning. But this is a value ladder and it's talking about the kind of thing that we as accountants do. So technically on paper, we are accountants and our income is generated from doing accountancy and bookkeeping work for our clients. Now, fortunately, 
that is more recurring than most people's businesses are because it's a monthly bookkeeping service or it's an annual, it might be a quarterly um, VAT return service or an annual account service. But generally people keep coming back and coming back unless something happens in their business. So but, with this value ladder, essentially what we're going to do is we're going to start utilising the fact that actually we can get recurring revenue out of our customers if we're clever with what we do and how we do it. So first things with a value ladder is you need to basically get them on the first step. And the way to do that is to offer them something for free, which gives them a good amount of value that makes them think, okay, yeah, I've got a taste for what you're like as a business, what you like to work with, and you've given me really good value. But you do need to collect their email address. That's the really important yeah, part. Yeah, absolutely. Don't just give it away for nothing. That is one thing you most definitely do want because then all of a sudden mm. you've got somewhere to target your marketing. So you do actually get something back, but you don't charge them any money at this point in time. Yeah. So, you, But you've got to give them something that it hits an immediate problem. So if you're an acupuncturist, it might be, you know, 10 ways to help you resolve your back pain or you know exercises to help you sleep better at night. Or if you're looking at weight loss, it might be three steps to drop a stone or you know, things like that. So <clears> it's got to be fairly short term fairly quick win and easy to implement and easy to move on for. But it's got to be enough to really whet the appetite of somebody who is just appearing in your world and just appearing on your customer radar. Mm. And actually, don't be afraid to over-deliver here. Just that little yeah. bit. Obviously, don't go insanely nuts, but um, over-deliver here because if you're giving them good stuff for free, they're going to think, mm, okay, what yeah. are you willing to, what are you giving away when I start to pay? Because if I'm getting this for free, there's going to be really good quality stuff there. Yeah, definitely. So use it really well as your lead magnet. Now, the next step of the lead, of the value ladder is essentially we're going to increase the value we give to our client. We're going to increase the price because obviously we've charged nothing so far. And this gives us basically our second step in our value ladder. So we might charge, say, a lower value item, say, 30 odd pounds or so. Uh, it might be a one-off charge. It might be a recurring fee. It might be, say, an ebook or a webinar, yeah. which is just literally... A basically the exercise is cover your costs you would incur of doing it. If your pay rate is twenty five pounds an hour, it takes you deliver takes you an hour to deliver a webinar. Think about pricing at twenty five pounds. You just want to cover your costs because then all of a sudden you can start using that for yeah. advertising. And the whole concept on it is basically you can put all of that into advertising and you're no worse off. Yeah. So the idea, um, if you're doing Facebook ads, for example, is to spend a little bit on Facebook ads. And maybe you spend £30 on Facebook ads and only one person out of the £30 worth of spend converts. If they spend £30 on that product, then that's great. You've made your money back and you're neutral. So the idea is to be able to generate something that is small enough, interested enough, but there's no risk attached. You know, they can afford a £30 or a £5 or a £10 or whatever your... Um, option might be it's a quick no-brainer and there's nothing lost really if they don't want to continue further up your value ladder mm. and it's a nice way to get people to start from the beginning as well so you get more yeah and then you can escalate the ones you've already got slightly further into the value ladder so why not push them towards something such as a membership site so you might have recurring this is a really good recurring um revenue stream actually. Yeah. You might have a monthly subscription to this, you might have an annual subscription where you give them a discount if they agree to an annual service. And this is a really good way of getting them involved because they've already had something for free, they like it, they've come back and they've bought something. Yeah. If they've bought something, they're an easier sale. They're they're essentially a hot lead. So it makes them a it makes them more familiar with you, it makes them an easier sale, and actually you can add a huge amount of value for this and you can generate yourself a recurring revenue stream, which is even better. Yes. Now, the, the thing with membership sites is membership sites or membership groups or clubs or whatever you want to call them don't need to be that complicated. What you're in now is a membership club. It's just free. So we're doing all this for you for free. So this is the first step on our value ladder, for example. But ultimately, where we want to get you is into a paid membership club. Now, nobody has to be in a paid membership club. They can sit in this free group for forever and a day. That's perfectly fine. But think about how this relates to your business and what you have and what you can sell and what, what skills you can share with people 
as part of a membership club, whether it be a free introduction to you and what you can offer or whether it be um, a paid group where you're going to generate income. Now, it doesn't need to be complicated. You can do it as part of this simple Facebook group, as I said, and we've seen people who um, do fitness groups in this way or um, weight loss challenges or you know, any kind of coaching program doesn't have to be pre-prepared, doesn't have to be um, overly engineered. You can just go live and deliver your content as you're going. But the challenge with something like this is to make sure, again, people are paying you to deliver a product or a service. So you need to still be able to deliver value. So take a 12 month plan, divide it into your 12 individual months, work out what lesson you want to teach people over those 12 months, and then how that breaks down into the four weeks. So we go live every day for 10 minutes, but we could just go live once a week for an hour. Um, we could go live once a month for an hour and then send worksheets and things into the group once a week. So there's all sorts of different ways of doing this, depending on how your delivery method suits you and your business and will be received by you and your customers. So have a think about that. Mm, there's a lot of thinking point there. And the good part about this section now is we've covered all of our ad costs. So anything you do make in this section is going to trickle down to your bottom all line. Profit. It's all profit. It's lovely. It's exactly what we want to see. And well, it's all profit, <laughs> assuming that you're managing the cost. Yeah, isn't yeah, it? that so is true. To be you, fair, you've got to consider the cost of the, the the group that you're running. But but if you do something through Facebook in a format like this, the the only real cost is your time. So it shouldn't be that difficult. Mm. And then you've got the potential to upsell. Always have the option to upsell um, because essentially it's one of the basically the sales funnel, isn't it? So you've got lots of opportunity here to upsell, but what could you potentially upsell as an individual? So you might be selling the, the recurring revenue from a membership site, but actually you might say, okay, look, I like this group of people. I'd like to do some group coaching with you guys. And then you've got a one-to-many relationship where actually you say, okay, I'm going to work with, say, four people at once, um, and mm. the cost may be, say, Five hundred pounds because they get you for say half a day or however long you're willing to give up yeah. in terms of time. And so that's likely to be something like a, a course, isn't it? So yeah. something that's on location could still be delivered as part of a separate membership group or a separate Facebook club, things like that. But it's a higher value. It's more intense, and you're there in person, whether it be on the call or whether it be in the room. So you're offering more value by being there and and helping people on. Not quite a one-to-one -one basis, it's a one-to-group basis rather than the one-to-many basis that you might have had with your membership site. So the client's got a little bit closer to you. As we mentioned before, when you move up the ladder, you get closer, uh, the client gets closer to you. So before we had perhaps zero contact with the free, very little contact with the ebook, and then more, and now we're looking at one-to-many relationship. But your absolute top seller could be, say, one-to-one -one mentoring, where actually they get a devoted time slot with you and that mm. could be your major selling point in terms of your high value items. So it could be, right, if you want really VIP service and you want maximum value, you will have to pay a higher price, but you do get a one-to-one -one mentoring that you're looking for. And by this point in time, because they've gone up the value ladder, they're more and more comfortable with you. And, and they trust they you trust and they know you. you and they like you. So you hit all of these sort of marketing plus points, yeah. don't you? It's essentially the nurturing stage mm. is going up the ladder. They And actually, it's quite good because if you're trying to imagine, like, take a look at the ladder. Imagine you don't have the three middle steps. Imagine you just have the free item and the £1,000. Very hard to get someone in at the £1,000 if they don't actually know you. It becomes quite a hard sale. And actually, you can do it, but it's a softer landing yeah. if you pull people in at the freebie and build them up. Yeah. So this is a brief introduction to the value ladders. So the top three tiers are where you really start to begin to make profit and where you really start to deliver the value. So you've got to deliver high, high value in order to take more profit out of the, the, the membership or the, the program or the mentoring that you're in. So this particular value ladder works for consultancy, it works for service-based industry where people are um, delivering a, a, a thing or a service that helps move somebody from a, pain, a point of pain up to a point where they're gaining or resolving their problem. 
but if this were a software product, it might be more features that are added as you pay more money. Um, if this is, um, I've met electricians where electricians who are particularly successful in businesses are then teaching other electricians how to grow a business. So the higher you get up the value chain, the more strategic the delivery that you tend to get um, becomes. So it's more about business development and business growth rather than resolving an original problem. So have a think about how this can relate to your business. So we, we'd like to set you a challenge today and see how many people would be willing to write their own value ladder. Just stick something down on paper like we have. This took me five or 10 minutes this morning with a, an A3 sheet of paper and a couple of whiteboard markers to work out what the value ladder is. And it really helps you see where you can grow your business. Now, how you do it is an entirely different um, subject, an entirely different conversation we need to have. But start to have a think about what you could do. If you're brave, take a picture of it, stick it in the group, and we'll talk around it and see if that's something that can work and, and get ideas from other people. So that's it with us um, in our 10 minutes at 10 today, which we've overrun a little bit. <laughs> Typical, we talk too much. Um, so we hope you enjoyed this. If you liked it, please give us some likes. If you um, have any queries, please mark it, you know, add those in the comments. And we'll see you again next week. Now, actually, that's a good point because next week I'm in Marrakesh for my own. Um, I'm on a business retreat with uh, Shah Wasmand. So I'm going to do the, the lives live in Marrakesh, but at whatever time suits uh, the program for the activities that we're involved in during the day. And um, there won't be a hurry next week. So you've got a week off. So <laughs> we'll see you next somewhere. week. And uh, thank you for joining us today. Bye for now. Bye.